Hello, um, welcome to today's webinar. I hope you all are safe and sound and started your day with lots of safeness and happiness. Well, today, coming to some technical issues, we could not start it on the time, but let's finish it on time with this webinar. I hope you all are happy with it. So today, my webinar is about two topics. The first one is the real meaning of COVID-19 or coronavirus. And the second one is its situation in our country, Afghanistan. So let's start it with this. First of all, uh, let it be noted that what a coronavirus is. Uh, the coronavirus is a virus which has Okay. Let's start as far as this pandemic, which is just all around the world nowadays. Let's start it about this virus. Coronavirus is a large family of viruses, means it's not just one virus. It is the biggest family of viruses. How does this virus start? It causes respiratory infections. And it starts with a small and real symptoms. The symptoms are not as serious as we think that this virus looked like the flu or cold, we could not differentiate the virus. That how could we differentiate this virus? According to this, we are having some topics about today and about the condition of it in Afghanistan. So let's start it about the conditions out here. This virus can range more than common diseases. It could range the deadly diseases. It starts very simply, but reported very difficultly. Even it could happen more than more respiratory system diseases. And even within it, we could say that it could cause lots of deadly diseases. When was the virus started and where was it found? The virus was found at the city of Wuhan at China. Let's see. I've just brought some information about the structure of COVID-19. There are a few uh, tips, but to be really honest, we're not going as virologists are going. We're going a bit easy, just to know about a little bit about this virus. The coronavirus is a large and valid positive standard RNA virus. Large means because this virus is separated all around the world. Enveloped means it is covered with a capsule about which we'll talk a bit later and positive standard RNA virus because it is a typical and phonic type of mRNA virus. At the reality, the virus belongs with the family of mRNA. It is enclosed with protein and spike protein. We'll know that what is protein and what is the spike protein. And it will, I'll just show it at the slide of it, or we could see, I'll just show it at where it happens. These viruses have the largest genome among all the RNA viruses, means We've got lots of viruses at the family of RNA, but to be really honest, this virus got the most biggest genome at all the viruses. And something very new, it has a membrane which is made from lipid or a lipid made membrane. This is the reason that the vaccine of COVID-19 wasn't found about that much easy. Or we could say that that is one of the most critical topics that the COVID-19 is not recognized yet, or all the types of COVID-19 are not recognized yet. You know, according to the shape of coronavirus, it is known for the name of corona. The reason is that this virus is foundable and even this virus shape is located as a crown. So that's why it's known as the coronavirus. So right now I've got two pictures here. These are about two things. The first one is about anatomy. The anatomical research, I told you that it have got the RNA in relapted protein. Within it, we have got spike protein. As you could see that the rollers or the sparks within the virus are called the proteins which are here. And you know the shapes which are in red places at the first picture at anatomy. That means they are the spike protein. 
And of course, as I said, they are covered with a capsule and or we could say that this capsule is a membrane and this membrane is made of lipid. I mentioned the, uh, the second picture, the crown shape. The virus, as we could see, look like a crown. So that's why it is known by the name of Corona or COVID-19. Let's talk about the other topic. The topic is about that, is this pandemic or virus COVID-19 man-made or not? At the very first days of separation of this virus, the worldwide, the people were saying that it is man-made, especially USA, the United States of America. They believe that COVID-19 or coronavirus is a man-made virus. Why did it? And the blame was on China. Uh, the reason was that one of the virologists, we are not going politically, but one of the virologists says at the America that this virus is, is a man-made virus. And she said, she was a female and she said that I'll prove this, that the virus is a man-made virus. But she couldn't right now. And even she gave a name, the US government gave a name to this virus, they see that this is a bioweapon. And the short form of COVID-19, they made that China organized virus on December 19, 2019. But now the research have been able to determine that the COVID-19 is not just a virus or a man-made bioweapon. It is a natural virus which is determined from the nature. So that's why we could say right now that it is a nature foundable virus, not a man-made virus. So the other issue is about that, what is the real meaning of COVID-19? I just described here that the real meaning of COVID-19 is taken from few words. Let's know that what the words are. It's a combination of alphabets. CO is for Corona. VI is for the virus, that's why we're calling it coronavirus. D, it is a symptomical the D for disease. And 19, of course, this virus was found for the first time in 2019, is December. So that's why it's known for 19 and it is the real form of COVID-19. The other topic is about that what are the ways of transferring COVID-19 or coronavirus? These are the most typical steps, as will be known, according to the advertisement that which was foundable at our TVs. Moreover, not just only on TVs, radios, news, and lots of things. We found them and we all know lots about it. For example, I just mentioned four types of transmissions. The first time transmission is from person to person. It is the most sociological transmission and well known as well. We know lots about that. You know, while we are meeting directly with someone on conversation or conversing someone at that time, we shake hands formally or we are having pet on the backs or for we could have cheeks kisses. And at the same time, we could have, it's very common at Afghans that they are hugging each other. So it is one of the most vertible and variable way through eyes, nose, and our ears. How does it happen? Well, we shake hands, then after that, we may touch that hands or we may touch the nose or with nose or eyes. So that is the most formalist way or the most known way with age that transfers the virus. The second one is the droplets or aerosols. What are these? Before that, we must know that what are the droplets or uh, we could say aerosols. You know, while someone sneezes or coughs, it's very normal. A type of liquid comes that is called aerosol. Or we could say that the tiny particle of coughing or sneezing is called droplets. While we are talking from a near destiny with someone, according to that, it's very natural. Someone coughs or someone sneezes. The liquid becomes separable at the air and at that time, it is foundable or separable from a person to a person it carries through the nose or mouth. Uh, you know, I'll just mention a point here. The point means while we are talking to someone at the time, at that time, we must have the separation or destination of six feet. We could have it from two feet, 
But the reality of six feet is that we, are, we could have the most ethical way to provide or prevent the virus. The third way is about the airborne transmission, how it happens. Well, someone discovers or someone comes at the place, at there, we see that the research has found that until three hours, the virus is separable and it'll stay at the air at the, until three hours. For example, if a person is there and he sneezes and already he or she is having the virus or suffering from the virus, and at the same time, they sneeze or they stay or take break at the time. And after some time, someone come and they breathe in this air. So they will be different, definitely be affected on this COVID-19. The fourth way is the surface transmission. It's very common and even it's very vertible way of transmission. For example, uh, and a country like Afghanistan, uh, well, we are having uh, lots of things just like grills, doors, windows, we are not sanitizing them. If you do not sanitize and sanitize them, so how could you realize this one? As I said at the before transmission, airborne transmission, the virus stays until three R on everything and the air. And while the air comes to a surface, so it'll be remained in a surface. And that is the reason how it happens through the eyes, nose, or we could say to the mouth. The reason is that we touch our hands after touching with the surfaces, with our one part of the body, so it is a vertical way. So the other topic is about uh, female. Uh, mostly this topic is according to the female and um, the whole world, the other transmission. It's about COVID-19 and pregnant women. The women who are pregnant, can they pass the COVID-19 through their babies, uh, even at the during of pregnancy? It's a very crucial topic, uh, which we know that lots of mothers who are COVID positive and are pregnant also. The reason of pregnancy and COVID-19, is it going passes to the babies or not? According to the new research of virology and physicians, means biophysicians, they say that no, it is not wearable or wearable. What the reason is, they have searched a lot about that at the different countries around the world. About more than 40 countries in the world, they discovered, they found, they checked 160, I'm sorry, 127 women, uh, which was a research from April until the June of 2020. They said that most of the women of them, about 64 women, I think so, uh, yeah, 64 women were pregnant and including pregnancy, they had the COVID-19, they were suffering from COVID-19, but through it, they said that none of the babies, the newborn baby was invented or tested positive with this. So it proves that COVID-19 is not, but, less encouraging finding from the new study which is happened around the world that the moms could not infect their babies or we could say that the antibodies of the virus are not makeable but transferring of this according to the placenta from the placenta is also not workable as expected the other topic is about breastfeeding during the COVID-19. As well, we know there are lots of mothers around the world and especially in Afghanistan, which are having breastfeeding to their babies. Is it uh, positively possible to be, according to the breast, breastfeeding that the virus passes to the newborn baby or not? Well, as well, we know it's still not clear. Why is it? I'm telling you the reason. Uh, according to the virologists and physicians, they see that uh, while we are having COVID-19 and a baby feeding, at that time it's not wearable or visible. Even they see that while the moms release is COVID-19, which are separable, the babies are getting hormones. They are releasing hormones while feeding up. At that time, the breastfeeding, the illnesses, according to the depression, the stress and anxiety of mother became less. That's why one of the reasons they said that 
during the COVID-19 is the endless or lists of anxiety. So that's why they say that it's good to give milks and it's not separable. But according to the newest research of 2021, and in Europe, there is a child born who has COVID-19, who is COVID-19 positive while he for suffering all from the, this virus, according to research, is would because of breastfeeding. It's not specific, but they said while a mother just follows the rule, the rules like the mother did, uh, which is very commonable. If a mother wear a mask, she just washes his, her hands simultaneously. So it couldn't be possible to release or to pass through a new baby. So according to the results, it's safe, but not as much. We could not believe it through all. The other way is the ways of diagnosis. We are not uh, going that much deeper in these ways because we're not talking about virology or we're not talking about well, just like too deeper and the medical. We are talking overall according to the society. So the ways of COVID-19 are lots of but the bestest or the more common ways are three. The first one is serology, second one is molecular test, and the third one is CT scan. First of all, let's go to serology, what the serology is. You know, uh, from lots of people, the people just found about at home. They are taking a decision and discussion at home. They are saying that, yeah, if I coughed, if I sneezed, then I have COVID-19. Or overall, if they say it according to the serology, they are saying they are just taking an example of themselves right now to themselves. They are taking a decision. Am I COVID-19 positive or not? But it is not the greatest way. Let's go to molecular way. It is the most bestest way ever, like we are having the tests from the symptoms which are doing at the spatial laboratories. And this is the way, the bestest way even to see the, and to found that is anyone COVID positive or not. It is the bestest way. And some people who want, who don't have to do this one, they could do CT scan as well. But as I said, as I mentioned that the molecular way is the bestest way ever. The other issue is about the weaved symptoms of COVID-19. The symptoms are different according to the age, immunity systems, and even to the more familiar diseases, the diseases which are already affecting on your body and making your immunity system bad and lower. It causes that the system is already lower according to the immunity, then how could you increase your immunity? So the most sensible diseases are diabetes or sugar, we could say, cardiovascular diseases, or we could say heart problems. And one of the most important is BP, blood pressure, which is very separable around the world. According to the medical research, we have got three types of symptoms. The symptoms are most common, less common and serious symptoms. It is just for COVID-19. So the weave symptoms of COVID-19 are, first, most common symptoms are including fever. We know that's what the fever is, and it's more vertebral than uh, the COVID-19. The second one is dry cough. You know, we could have cough according to the visible coughs and the cold and even and sore throat, but here, it is a dry cough which could cause COVID-19. It shows that he or she is causing COVID-19. Tiredness it is one of the most important symptoms which could happen at every disease, but at this disease, it is most pressurable. The body pains, they are having headaches and having very, very roughly tiredness. They could not done an activity. They don't have the separational way to do this. The least common symptoms are Aches and pains, as I said, I mentioned that before, sore throat. Sore throat means the throat ache, which is also positive, diarrhea. It also happens in this. Conjunctivitis, and while we're having conjunctivitis, it is not common and other diseases, it's well common and just COVID-19. Headaches, loss of taste or smell. According to the disease, are the cold or flu, we're just losing our smell, but not the taste. But while we've got the COVID-19, we could lose our taste as well. So 
Uh, a type of rashes. Rashes means a type of symptoms or a type of damages on the hands or the fingers on toes. Means on the hands or our feet, we've got some types of symptoms which could cause lots of disease or rashes on our skins. The most qualitative or the most serious symptoms of this virus is, is difficulty and breathing. While we've got difficulty in breathing, or we could say that hypoxia, the hypoxia or shortness of breathing at that time, we may have our future research and check out. The second one is chest pain. This chest pain is not as normal as the others are. This chest pain is more serious. And the other one is loss of speech or moment. We could not reserve or research ourselves that how are we right now. So let's talk about, I'll just bring a chart, chart here about that what are the difference or the more co main common differences between flu, cold and the COVID-19. As I said, fever is in all these three, as, even as flu, cold or co coronavirus. The second one is ferigue or the ferigue we are calling it tiredness. Mm -hmm. Tiredness at the cold, we are not having a tiredness, but um, both the flu and coronavirus it is commonable. And the cough is also common in all the three because we see that the dry cough is normal at the COVID-19 and the, at the flow or cold we could have the neurable cough. Sneezing, sneezing is and cold. At flow we are not having sneezing, but at the COVID-19 sometimes we've got this. X and pains are common, common, and sometimes common because we say that it is not at the common illnesses or the common symptoms. It are the, are the special symptoms as I mentioned before. The other one is stuffy nose. Stuffy nose, uh, we could say that at the coronavirus, it's not as common as an the flu or cold. So truth is common in all of these three. And diarrhea is not common and cold, but at the flow, sometimes simultaneously it happens with the coronaviruses. Headaches is common, but we say that not common at COVID-19. As I mentioned at the, before the chart that I had it, I said that it's common, but it is one of the least common symptoms, not the more one. And shortness of breath is not and cold and flu, it is just and COVID-19, which is very difficult and very dangerous for our health. The other thing that we are having it, we have got, and we know a lot about the ways of prevention and the world, we have heard it from lots of television and lots of ways and lots of advertisements that there are lots of ways of prevention. First of all, we must talk about the ways of prevention of a quiet respiratory outbreak, or we could say that about, the, uh, about our breathing system, that how could we do, how could we prevent the lots of diseases from the breathing system. First, washing hands frequently and carefully. Washing hands doesn't mean that just wash it for five seconds or just do it without with just water. We could wash or clean our hands with sanitizers, soaps, and so and so on. But for more than 20 seconds or at least for 20 seconds. Second, avoid touching hands with eyes and nose while having or suffering from this disease. It's very common that we are touching our hands and our nose, but we must not do it while we are having this disease, covering nose and mouth while sneezing and coughing. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is going, not going to social places while we are suffering from COVID-19 because we could separate it for the other peoples as well. The other one is avoid handshaking, hugging, kiss on the cheeks or pet on the backs. And these are the most variable ways, as I mentioned before, and yeah, while sneeze or cough, we must have a handkerchief and the handkerchief or sleeves or tissue must be put on, on a waste basket, not, not to be down at the place where the people are. The other way is that right now we are talking about the ways of prevention of the whole body to the COVID-19. There are dozens of ways to be safe and protected from this virus. Could you please change the chart, please? The first way is that do not share our personal items. You know, we are having mobiles, laptops, such uh, as dishwashes, other things we are having, food, dinner. We could not share them because if they share these things, so this means that you are sharing the virus with others. The other one is 
have the social or physical distancy or avoid this. How to do this while you are at the, at the time or at the place that you could prevent this, so you must have boring. And if you have any question, please, you may ask it. Okay, so I would like to thank all of you for being there and uh, thanks a lot for your uh, attention to me. Well, goodbye. See you next time, inshallah.